Hello and welcome to the Tottenham America channel. Today we will be going over our five takeaways from Tottenham's humiliating 4-1 loss to Leicester City uh, yesterday, February 11th, as goals from Ichianacho, Barnes, Madison, and Mendy did the damage against Spurs to give them their biggest defeat of the season marginally so far. We're going to start with our first takeaway, which is Pedro Porro, who made his Spurs debut yesterday after completing his signing to Spurs on deadline day of the January transfer window, needs a good defender behind him. He is an attacking wing back. He's a right wing back, but he's full attacking, and we don't we really haven't had a wing back at Spurs like him before. Emerson but, Emerson does so much better at wing back just because he can defend. Yeah. But if if Pedro Porro doesn't have Kuti behind him, I think he needs Kuti behind him. Yeah. If he doesn't have him there, then he can't perform. And we've seen how not great he's not great at defending. Yeah. Most mostly when he was coming forward, he was making opportunities, creating chances, and giving danger to the Leicester defense. Yeah. The key here is that he is a very attacking wing back, right? And so he's every time we went forward yesterday, he looked good. He was able to play off the passes that we needed. But because Spurs have had such bad center backs in recent years, ever since Yen and Toby left, our center backs have been so low quality, except for Romero, that our wing backs are almost trained to defend. Like, all they do is defend. They should be attacking, because in a Conte system, the big part of your, of your formation is the wing backs. But when your wing backs have to defend, they're useless. And Pedro Porro, who played a very attacking role for um, sporting in Portugal is suddenly having to defend all the time because Tanganga doesn't really know how to give back up to Poro because he's not a great defender. Yeah, Tanganga also got cut out of position so many times, and it was like Ihinyacho was just walking through him. Literally, Literally walking through Literally. him, yep. Um, and let's and like, Pedro Poro, uh, at Sporting, he pretty much played a right winger, almost. Yes, yeah, almost. All of his... He all played of very high yeah, up. Yeah, he play, he scored many goals, many has got many assists in the time he was at uh, Sporting. Yeah. I believe last season he was on loan there for Man City, and only this season, this last summer, he made a permanent move to yep. Sporting. So in a year and a half he was there, he did so well and got so many goals and assists, and he's really attacking. So we really can't, we have to always also judge, depending on the game. So, like, if we're playing Man City, we, like, where we just played, we won one nil. We made the right decision to put Emerson in because we needed a good defender at right wing back to defend yeah. whoever it was at left wing, like Jack Grealish. Yeah, but we didn't do that against uh, Leicester, and that came back, proved to, you know... Harvey Barnes pretty much just ran through Pedro yeah, Porro every literally. time. Exactly. Uh, let's continue to our second takeaway. Our second takeaway is that we need to make new center back signings in the summer. Our current defense is not holding up. So if we go back to the Colchester game... All those many years ago under Poch, where we went out in the League Cup, do you know what our back three was? Tanganga, Dyer, Davies. Same back it's three. It's the same back three that have been causing us problems. Not so much Davies all the time, but I'd still like to include him in the category of just not good enough for Spurs. Tanganga, I still don't know why he's played, but the fact, the biggest problem is that we've invested in the wrong ways, and we haven't invested in the position we need the most. Especially in a Conte system, because in a Conte system, you need to have good center backs. In the summer, we have to make some big signings in center yeah. back, like Andika from Frankfurt. He shut us down in that nil-nil draw yeah. in the Champions League group stage when we played them. So he can be he can replace Dyer as our mm -hmm. big center back. The biggest problem for us is because we had Yan and Toby for so long, since I think the 13-14 season they were our starting center back pair, we never felt the need to upgrade. And then once they left, it hit, hit us like a truck, and all of a sudden we're completely uh, useless in defense. None of our defenders are up to par because all of the guys who were initially, you know, backup center backs, Davies was not starting for a while. He was starting for maybe one season, but most of the time he was backup to Rose or Vertonghen. Dyer was a midfielder who was... Largely back up through the 18-19 and 17-18 uh, season. And Tanganga was a youngster who came through really brightly and then just completely fell off. So, like, 
That investment has not been there yeah, for us. Yeah, for Tanganga, I think it was really that injury he picked up two seasons ago. Yeah. When we played Aston Villa in the 2021 yeah. season. And he had to go off on a stretcher. That, I feel like that injury really impacted him. Mm-hmm. He's never going to be the same again. Yeah. <laughs> Our next takeaway is that missing Bentancur is going to be a huge blow. We heard news today that Rodrigo Bentancur has injured his ligament, cruciate ligaments and will be out for six months minimum. The end of this, that, that's the whole season. Yeah. Um, to make matters worse, I've just seen a tweet that says Yves Bissouma could be out for two to three months as he recovers from surgery. That's two of our big midfielders out for the basically the rest of the season. Pierre's, 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 our, lone, Pierre's our lone midfielder, and yeah. he's suspended for Milan on Tuesday. So that we're going to have to start Sar and Skip. Sar In and the, Skip. Yeah. They're both like 20 years of age or 21. Yeah. Really young. And they're playing European football at that young of an age. Yeah. And they're starting. It's going to be a very, very interesting next couple of months. Not even weeks now. You have to say months because... The whole... The, it's going to be a very interesting rest of the season. Yeah. Well, in, especially in midfield because missing Ben Tanker, he's easily been one of our best players this season. Then you look at Basuma, who was starting to grow into form, I think, at Tottenham. Did well against Preston. Yep. And now we have to resort to Skip and Saar. Saar is very young. He's got some experience, but he's very young. Skip also is still on his mend uh, from I that six-month in- injury. I want to say, Saar has more experience than Skip. He just looks way better on the ball in midfield, way more confident than Skip. I, I think because Saar played in the World Cup. And because Skip had that injury. Yeah. That's and, a big part. And Skip played, played in part. championship, too. Yeah. He hasn't yeah. really played much in the Premier League. He did. He played at least he half did, a season. But, but that six-month injury killed yeah. him. I blame it on that. I think he's got the experience he needs. He's played in Europe a couple times. It's just that bit of um, injury that really killed him. Let's continue on to the fourth takeaway. Our fourth takeaway is is that we have a bunch of injury problems. And Sessignon's out, like we just talked about, Bentenker, uh, Basuma, Bentenker out for a minimum of six months, Basuma out for possibly two or three months, yeah. recovering since surgery, and we have Sessignon and Lloris. So yep. Sessignon play- out for six to eight weeks with a hamstring injury, shock, and Lloris out for six to eight weeks with a knee injury. I know so. Sessignon hasn't been performing well, but who are you going to have to back up at left wing no back one. for Perisic? No well, one. Could have been Matt Doherty, but we decided to terminate his contract when we could have easily terminated anyone like Sessignon's contract. We could have Spence, terminated. But I don't no, think we, we were did. never going to terminate. We, we just, we just send spent him $15 yeah. million on him. We were never going to terminate Spence's contract, but we could have terminated Sessignon's. We knew his form was going down into a pit. Uh, we could have terminated any of our useless back three who let Harry Winks. Ikenacho walk through us. Winks is on loan, so we can't really terminate I mean, it right now. Um, but Sessignon, Tanganga. Tanganga, maybe, yeah, but Doherty was just not the right player to terminate because of his versatility at left and right wing back. And he was doing well. Crystal yeah. Palace, that was the only chance he pretty much got yeah. recently. And, and he scored. He scored, yeah. So now we have a 34-year-old Perisic who's going to be taking up that left wing back spot for the rest of the season. We have Fraser Forrester, a 34-year-old goalkeeper, backup goalkeeper, who's going to be taking up that goalkeeping position for the rest of the season. We have Hoybier as the lone good, lone experienced midfielder at 27, and we're going to have one of Saar or Skip consistently in midfield for the next three to four months, minimum. The only good thing I can say here is that we're going to see a lot of Saar and Skip, so I think we're going to see them shine. Yeah. This is their chance. Their chance. It was going to be Basuma's chance, but he got injured. Yep. If Bentaker is out for the end of the season, could have been Basuma's chance to shine. He's getting back into form. Mm-hmm. Got rid of that haircut. Got his regular yeah. haircut back, with, which he was gunned under with Brighton. <laughs> um, but Saar and Skip will have a huge chance to shine. Players really do well when they consistently play. Yeah. Not when they consistently get maybe like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes a game and occasionally come on as a sub. They're not going to improve that much. They just yeah. need experience. That's all they need. They just yeah. need to play. That's true. Uh, let's move on to our fifth takeaway, which is that we missed the big opportunity to break into the top four. Uh, so if we go back to the results yesterday. West Ham tied with Chelsea. I mean, they're kind of far behind us. But Arsenal still. tied with Brentford. Brighton tied with Crystal Palace. They're also on our tail. And the biggest one was that Newcastle drew with yep. Bournemouth. 
Which Newcastle, meant that we could have gone into the top four. Yep. If we had won yesterday, we would have gone above Newcastle and into the top four on 42 points. Newcastle on 41 points. Of course, Tottenham had to squander that opportunity. And Newcastle did have a game in hand. If they did win that game, then they'd only be one point ahead of us. Yep. Which, which would have closed the gap by a lot. Yeah. So, like, I mean, that was... It was a big missed opportunity for us. We Very really, frustrating. Yeah. And this was really the one point where we could have revived our season. We had the injury problems, but if we'd at least gotten the win yesterday, I think people would have been happier. But now people are questioning everything. Our our, our playing style, <laughs> our tactics, we're, they're questioning Conte. All around the, the club, it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting next six months. And I think we're going to throw everything at the cup. I think yeah. we're actually going to just FA throw cup. at the FA Cup because that's our biggest chance of winning a trophy at this point. You know, and Harry Kane's got to be, with Loris out, we don't have a captain. Harry Kane's now our skipper, if and we, he has to lead us. If we win a trophy, anything, a FA Cup with Kane, he's going to stay. I'm telling yeah. you. We have to, with our midfield gone, we can't rely on them as much. They're probably going to, with Skip and Son, they might skip, sit back more. we got to push our wingbacks forward. That's yeah. what we have to do. And with Pedro Porro, we can do that. Emerson Royale, we know he's not the best at attacking, but he is great defensively. And Perisic, uh, similar to Pedro Porro, but well, he's better at defense than Pedro Porro, but really good at attacking. He yeah. just can't, like, finish. Yeah. Uh, but that's it for our five takeaways from Tottenham's 4-1 loss to Leicester at the King Power Stadium. If you enjoyed and want to see more Tottenham Hotspur content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to see more Spurs content and never miss out on any of our videos. Comment down below what your biggest lesson learned from this game was. And until next time, come on, you Spurs!